Hey guys, uh, welcome to YRR Help and uh, this is my fourth video on Spring MVC series. In my last video, I have shown you how to display product information. And in this video, what we're going to do is that uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, process basic form and I'm going to show you how to get form data in your uh, controller. So we're going to use something called a form binding in um, So what form binding exactly is that um, you're going to bind your entire form to your respective Java Pojo class or Bean class. So by this way, uh, Spring MVC will give all the form information in your respective Java class. All right, uh, so what really happens is that uh, you're going to map, or you're going to bind each and every input, let's say username, to the respective username property in a Java Bean or Java Pojo class. So just like that for password, you're going to map this password input field to respect to uh, password parameter in a Java object so uh, that's how form binding works so you cannot achieve this kind of form binding in a uh, basic html5 or jsp so what we're going to do is that we're going to use um, uh, spring tag library so these uh, tag libraries uh, provide us a easy and flexible way to uh, map or bind to java objects so that's the use of spring tag libraries and it will provide um, Few more features such as uh, error handling uh, or displaying uh, validation information and etc. So uh, let me just show you how does it work. So I'm going to go back to my project and I'm going to create a basic model here. So I'm going to go to my models package and I'm going to create a class. Let's say user. In that I'm going to create uh, two fields. So which is uh, which I'm going to map to respect to username and password field. All right, let, let's say private string username and private string password. All right, so I'm going to create getters and setters for this one. Uh, generate getters and setters, select all. All right, now we have our uh, basic Pojo class. Now I, I'm going to go to my controller. Sorry, I don't have controller, so I'm going to create a controller. So I'm going to create a controller as a user controller. All right. So I'm going to say controller. And uh, the next thing is that uh, I'm going to map this uh, entire uh, user controller to user. Right? So I'm going to say request mapping, and I'm going to map to user. Right. So. So next thing is that I'm going to create a get request here. So this get request is actually called when I click on uh, your account. So when I click on your account, it will display my uh, actual form information or a form view. So I'm going to create a uh, mapping for that. And I'm going to call it as get mapping. Login. And I'm going to create a method display login. All right now uh, i'm going to return a view called let's say user underscore login so we haven't really created this view but i'm going to create in a second so uh, this is just the basic stuff which we have done in previous tutorials and uh, the next thing is that i'm going to create a jsp and and i'm going to call it as user underscore login on jsp so in that I'm going to quickly uh, import my template base template here user underscore login and the one thing you have to as add is that as I said we'll be using uh, spring tag libraries so if you go to your header.jsp I have included spring tag libraries uh, here so make sure that you add uh, these two libraries all right now <coughs> I'm going to come back to uh, user underscore login so in that, as I said, we'll be using, uh, we won't be using HTML forms, but instead we'll be using a spring tag forms. So I'm going to use a tag called form and again form. So this is how you create a basic form in uh, using spring tags. Now inside that I'm going to create an actual input field and I'm going to create another input field for password. right now the first thing is that you have to uh, say post mapping 
<laughs> but I'll be sending information to the same page so I'm not specifying ac action attribute here and the next thing is that you have to map a uh, respect to form to your actual Java class or Java object so for that um, so JSP is uh, it won't create it won't actually create a Java object for you so you have to create Java raw Java object and you have to send this to the view so I'm gonna go to my user controller uh, and I'm gonna create a an user an empty user right now i'm going to add to my model uh, say model dot set attribute sorry add attribute and uh, i'm going to say key as user so this key is very important because uh, this is the key which we'll be using in our views so uh, i'm going to add my user object now uh, this use empty user is available in our view so now uh, I'm going to add an another attribute called modal attribute and uh, I'm going to I'm going to add the key which we have specified here. So uh, when I do something like this what happens is that you are actually mapping your entire form uh, to your actual user object. So that's how it works. The next thing is that we have to map each and every input to the respective field. So uh, for that I'm going to use path attribute. So here you have to specify the actual uh, field here. So uh, here I have username. So I'm going to map that to username. And the same thing uh, I'll do for password also. So I'm going to copy this password field. And I'm going to map to user. Right. Now uh, I'm going to say type as text. Right, so here I'll say type as password. All right, oops, sorry. All right, so here we have our basic form. So what really happens is that whenever a form uh, data is displayed, it will try to uh, call get username on this respective field and it will display the information. And the same thing when you are submitting the form, it will call set username and it will um, set whatever you have typed here in respect to in the respective field. So that's how it works. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add some HTML and bootstrap stuff, you know, just to get this nice good looking UI. So all right, I have copy pasted some bootstrap stuff. You don't really have to worry about this. The only thing you need to focus on is this form information and um, this form input. So I think it should be small n. Now I'm going to go to my, uh, you know what, let me just run this one and let me show you how this, how does it look. Now I'm going to go to my local host and when I click on your account, it should display um, my information yep it's working fine and um, and the thing is that if you go to a uh, header.jsp uh, I have mapped this your account which is here to slash user slash login uh, the next thing is that we should be able to capture this form information and uh, we should get it in a user controller so uh, I'm gonna go to user controller and I'm gonna add a post mapping here so this method is used to process our form data and uh, I'm going to map to the same URL. All right, I'm going to say process login. I'm not sure if the spelling is correct. As usual, modal, modal. Uh, let me just import post mapping. Right, I'm going to return home page. Now the thing is that we should get the form information uh, using this uh, modal attribute. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to add another annotation here, which is a modal attribute. And I I'm going to specify key as user. So this key is uh, exactly what we are using here. So uh, what Spring does is that it will capture all the form information, it will inject in your user class, and it will give that user class um, in controller. So this is how you get the information. Uh, let me just import that one. 
uh, I'm going to debug this and I'm going to show you uh, whether the values are coming properly here. So I'm going to put a debug point here. All right. Now I'm going to run this application in debug mode, demo application. All right. Now I'm going to go back to my login from. Now uh, when I click on login, it will hit a breakpoint. Uh, let me go back to Eclipse. No. All right. So as you can see here, um, here I have two fields, username and password. And uh, so it's actually displaying the actual value which I have entered here. Now, uh, so that's how you capture the farm information. I know this is very, very basic thing. So in my next video, what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to show you how to validate uh, your farm input. And I'm going to show you how to display error error messages using a Spring Validation API. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe us.